hello. Well, anyone who can write a book called Hollywood is a four-letter town and still continue to live in it is a veteran writer in my book. I mean, he's got a new one coming out called Hollywood is... Oh, nymphomaniacs I have known. Oh. Nymphomaniacs I have Never known. Never met a nymphomaniac I didn't like. He never met a nymphomaniac he didn't like. I mean, we've got to hear <laughs> more about this. He wrote for years and years for the Herald Examiner. James Bacon, a veteran columnist, a great writer, the only one that Jackie Gleason wanted to have write his book. He would have written Zsa Zsa Gabor's book, but he gave her back the money because she only wanted to write it through the eyes of her dog. I kid you not. So True. let's eavesdrop with Skippy and James Bacon now. What does you mean by Zsa Zsa? You gave Zsa, Zsa the money back? Well, she didn't pay me any money. <laughs> oh, okay, first of all. But yeah. I, I did spend three months with her writing a, writing a book, and uh, Zsa Zsa would detail, in intimate detail, all her love affairs. Right. But then she didn't want to write she enjoys, about it. But she enjoys talking about her love affairs. Right, yeah. But Why she did, does she do that? I don't know. She just loves to talk about it, but she didn't want me to write about it. She uh, she wanted her book. To, mm -hmm. She was kind of like a cross right, between right, Rebecca right. Sunnybrook Farm and uh, uh -huh. Mother <laughs> Teresa. You get along good with her? Oh yeah, yeah. You do? Yeah. How do you handle her? Oh, because you got to handle her with kid gloves. Uh, they say I don't know. Zsa Zsa, as George Sanders once told me, when he was married to her, he says, "Life is pleasant. It's like living on the slopes of a volcano. <laughs> Very pleasant during between the eruptions." <laughs> Tell me about John Wayne and James Bacon, drinking buddies. Come on. Oh yeah, Duke and I were uh, pretty good, good buddies. Good drink. One night, uh, actually one day at lunch, he called me up. He was having trouble with his second wife, Chata. Right. And it was St. Patrick's Day, and he says, "Let's go over the cock and bull and uh -huh. celebrate St. Patrick's Day." Two o'clock at night, yes. we finished lunch. Two o'clock the next morning. <laughs> When the place closed. Right. So Duke says, uh, I'm going to call a cab and we'll go down to San Juan Capistrano and see the swallows come back. <laughs> so he bought a couple bottles of scotch from the bartender. Uh -huh. We called a cab and we went down to San Juan Capistrano. Uh -huh. Now this is 1952 mm -hmm. and there are no freeways. Right. And the meter kept running and running, you know. I think back then, by the time we got to San Juan Capistrano, it was five or six hundred dollars, right. something like that. And the cab driver never heard of San Juan Capistrano, so we'd have to pull on a gas station, an all-night gas station, and Duke say, uh, which way to San Juan Capistrano? Oh, you know? And the gas station guy, he, he just shake. He couldn't believe it. John <laughs> Wayne was asking directly. Uh -huh. So we finally got there about five o'clock in the morning, and we're sitting in the mission parking lot right. with the meter running, and a priest comes by on his way to mass, and uh, Duke says, uh, Padre, we came down here to see the swallows come back, and the priest starts <laughs> laughing, and he couldn't stop laughing. Uh -huh. Duke says, what's so funny, Padre? And the priest says, uh, <laughs> You're two days early. <laughs> they don't come back to March 20th. <laughs> so Duke turned to the cab driver and says, stop at the nearest saloon. Uh -huh. <laughs> Tell me about James Bacon. Where are you actually from, James? Really? I grew up where? I grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. uh, two small towns, in fact. One called Jersey Shore, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. which is nowhere near right. New Jersey. And uh, then I moved 12 miles up the Susquehanna River to uh, another town uh -huh. called Lock Haven. So when did you start having your column, James? Start writing. When? when? Well, uh, I was working for the AP in Chicago. Right. In 1948, and I was covering Al Capone's gang. And really? Oh yeah, sure. And uh, the front page, all the characters of the front page were still working there. Right. Except Hildy Johnson, right. who uh, got killed. And uh, the AP sent me out to Hollywood, so I started in 1948. Uh, Came out here in 48. 48, and started writing a Hollywood column. Uh -huh. And then 68, I went to the Herald Examiner. Yeah. So you were at the ho in Hollywood in 48, when Luella Parsons and all oh, those Oh, yeah, I was contemporary Tempor with, uh, with her. Luella and Hedda, sure. Mm. Yeah, I, wow. Betty Davis, come on, let's talk about Betty Davis. Yeah, tough I love lady. Betty. You love her? Oh, tough yeah. lady, wasn't yeah, she? She was tough. You know, she, she always said, 
you know, if you're going to be a great actress, you've got to be tough. Elsa will trample all over you. And she was right, in a way. She's very tough, yeah. You've had some great people you've met in your life here in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You've intimately talked to them. Looking back, who were some of the most exciting people that James Bacon well, I'd have stuck to, in your mind? I'd have to put Bogey in there, mm. Humphrey Bogart. Uh -huh. uh, Bogey was, <laughs> what a character that guy was, you know. He's always starting fights, but never participating in any of them. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah, Jesus. He'd, he'd go to a party and get drunk. And uh, like one night, uh, William Wellman, you know, the right. famous director, famous. Mm -hmm. who, had a, who was a pilot in World War I, and Paul Mance were at the, right. the same party. Right. Duke Wayne gave the party, in fact. And uh, they were both famous flyers. Mm -hmm. So Bogey's drunk. He goes up to Wellman. He says, uh, God, Paul Mance tells me that you never got out of the United States during World War I. All that crap about you being in the Lafayette Escadrille is uh, nothing. You never did anything. He right. says, you never even got off the ground. <laughs> then he went over to Mance, and he says, uh, Wellman says, you can't fly a plane. He says, you're the worst pilot he ever saw, and one thing or another. Says. And now these guys were uh -huh. great friends, Wellman and Mance. All of a sudden, they're out in the middle of the dance floor slugging each other. Right. And so there's Bogey at the bar, having a drink, laughing like hell. Uh -huh. fi finally, Duke had to go out and part him. <laughs> wow. James Bacon had, do you know James Bacon looking back? He's been to Hollywood. I mean, he's been to Hollywood parties more than any man in this town. I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. Many Hollywood parties. I, no, I very seldom ever go to any anymore. No more. <laughs> nah. You keep to yourself now, quietly. Yeah, I play golf and uh, I stay home, write books and that sort of thing. Yeah. You know, how many times can you see Bob Hope get an award? But Hollywood, <laughs> those days were Hollywood, James. Oh Bacon. yeah. Come they on. They were fun. They were good. I mean, fun. Marilyn Monroe's and Humphrey Bogart's and Absolutely. Spencer Tracy. Tell me about Spencer Tracy. Spencer. You and Spencer were very close. Yeah, Spencer and I were very good friends. I once uh, had lunch with him over at Romanoff's, and uh, Spence was on his about a scotch at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and all of a sudden, I looked across the table, and his face was flat down in the mashed potatoes. So being a good Samaritan, I bundled him up, and I had a couple of waiters. Kurt Nichols was one of them, the guy that owns the, the bistro. He was a waiter then, <laughs> Roman off. Helped me carry uh, Tracy out to my car, mm -hmm. and I took, drove all the way out to Trancas Beach. Right. Now, I was not supposed to know he was shacked up there with Catherine Hepburn but he was. Uh -huh. So I drove him out there, and I get him out of the car, and he's heavy, dead weight. He's passed right. out, you know, and I'm just dragging him, dragging him, you uh -huh. know, and all of a sudden, Kate comes from behind the thing, and she says, Bacon, you SOB. <laughs> uh -huh. Tracy, oh, Spence always gets drunk when he's with you. And I said, I haven't seen him in two years. <laughs> and she says, you're an evil companion for Spencer Tracy. And I says, how can anyone be an evil companion for Spencer Tracy? <laughs> so People love Go ahead. As she started to pick up a brick, so uh -huh. I just dropped Tracy in a heap, and I left. <laughs> wow. I never, I never <laughs> talked to Catherine since. <laughs> People love to drink with James Bacon those days, though. Yeah, I'm... Uh, Why is that, James? Tell me. Uh, I guess... <laughs> you had great stories to tell, and you're a great listener, or... What well, I guess I, I'm a great drinker. <laughs> a great drinker? Is that? <laughs> That's probably the reason. Yeah. You know, uh, in fact, I'm the only one that's ever officially been labeled an evil companion for Jackie Gleason. Jackie Gleason. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, you did his life story, yeah. too. Yeah, that's right. I was down on the set of The Toy uh, in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, when I was uh, writing the book. And uh, Jackie said, let's have lunch. Okay. He said he didn't have to be on the set till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Well, you have lunch with Gleason. Gleason has eight double scotches. No ice, <laughs> no, ice. no water, no soda. Eight, eight <laughs> double scotches. No food. <laughs> so, four o'clock, we go out to the set in his limousine, and uh, they're not ready for him. So he turns to his uh, aide de camp, uh, Mel Pape, says, uh, fixes up a couple more scotches. So we had about four or five more scotches. Yes. Well, Jackie thought he was just going to be shooting reaction scenes, you know, where you can phone him in. 
instead of that, Dick Donner, the director, uh, strapped Jackie in a golf cart and had him chase Richard Pryor all over this big southern plantation. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Jackie was a little driving under the influence. <laughs> he wound up in the bottom of the swimming pool. He <laughs> damn near drowned. Uh -huh. It's the funniest scene in the movie. Fortunately, they kept the camera going. Mm -hmm. Next morning, uh, I called up my chauffeur and I said, uh, uh, I'm ready to go to the set. He says, well, you better call Pete Emmett, the publicity guy. And uh, I said, okay, I figured, well, maybe they changed the location or something. So I called Pete Emmett, the publicity guy, and he says, he says, I'm really embarrassed, but I'll tell it to you straight. Dick Donner's barred you from the set. <laughs> And I said, why? He says, because you're an evil companion to Jackie Gleason. Uh -huh. I says, how can anyone be an evil companion to Jackie Gleason? Uh -huh. But I was barred from the set. Uh -huh. Only time my whole career in Hollywood I was ever barred from the set. So that one thing to do is just get on the plane, fly back home. The first person I called was Bob Hope, and I gave him the whole story. And Hope says, you know, it's really a tribute. <laughs> <laughs> was Hope a drinker? No, not really, uh, no, Hope was not a drinker. Uh, occasionally, I've been with him like on New Year's yes, Eve when uh -huh. he'd, uh, he'd have a, a maybe couple. a little bit too uh -huh. much uh, uh -huh. Dom Perignon on or something like that. But that was right. just New Year's Eve. No, Hope was not a drinker. Huh? Jackie Gleason's book. Mm -hmm. James Bacon wrote it. Right. Tell me about that book. The name of the book was? How Sweet It Is. Good what title. else? What else is there? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about the book did it sell? Did it? Make oh yeah, it was a big yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah, it, it was real big hit. Yeah, I made a lot of. Are money they going to do that. a movie on uh, on Jackie Gleason's life? Well, his uh, his wife uh, kind of fights it a little bit, and in fact, Sheila McRae told me today, you know, who was the la of last uh, Alice Cramden says uh, Marilyn Gleason doesn't want to sh show Jackie in a movie because. The, People see how fat he was. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, he always was very fat. You know. Did you know, honey, honey, uh, honey very well. Honey and I were very close. I yeah. met her with I Dick Roman, and yeah, Annie oh, yeah, met Dick sure. with yeah, me. Right yeah. me. And Dick gave me my name, Skippy Lowe. Oh, is that That's right? where I got the name, I'll Skippy Lowe. Yeah, sure. And Dick was a singer, a boy singer. Yeah, on, up in Vegas. Yeah. In Vegas. Yeah, I knew Honey but very well. He, and he married Honey, and yeah. Honey was his mistress for many years. Gleason, she, uh, she with is Jackie? With, she's with Gleason 20 years, I 20 think. 20 years. Aww. But she left him. She met this young singer. Yeah. He had yeah. just a boy singer. Well, and left Jackie Gleason. Just see, Jackie couldn't get a divorce. It hurt him, didn't it? Yeah, he was married in uh, 1936 to a very devout Catholic. Although she was from show business, uh, Jackie says she should have been a nun. <laughs> and, of course, Jackie was a hoodlum. Right. And uh, she would not give him a divorce, so I, I, I imagine Honey figured there's no future, you know. Mm. That's what she figured. Yeah. After 20 years, she's not going to get married. But mm -hmm. after she got married, James Bacon, he got married. Oh, Gleason. After that, Gleason. Oh, yeah, he got married the next day the when next, that new uh, the, law came in, you know, where he could, uh, no fault divorce. He met another lady and married a, yeah. uh, one of the dancers in the show, I think. Uh, well, no, uh, no he, he, had, he had one in between. Oh, he did? Yeah, uh, a girl he met at the uh, country club where he played okay. golf uh -huh. at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> was Jackie Gleason fun to be with? Yeah, I, I loved being with Gleason. He was very what makes fun. What makes him, was he on all the time? James? No, 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 not like a lot of comedians. Uh, no, he wasn't on all the time. He was funny. He was naturally funny. But, naturally. Uh, no, he, he didn't. Uh, a lot of comedians are on all the time. Yes, yes. And, uh, but Gleason wasn't. No, no. Uh -huh. Like Kenny Youngman, who's one of my dearest friends. You know, he, he is never on all the time. He's on all the all time. All the time, oh, Henny is? Yeah, you can't, you know, you like Henny, you sit down with him, he'll say, I just... Oh, yes, Henny Youngman, I know, yeah. the one-liner, right, yeah. of course, said, of course. I, I just got arrested in Beverly Hills today. And I said, <laughs> why, Henny? He said, I was driving an American-made car. <laughs> oh, <that's okay>. <laughs> <laughs> James. That's the way he opens a conversation. <laughs> James, Marilyn Monroe. Yes. When she first arrived in this town. Right. You're the man. I know. Tell her me about it. 1949 is when I first met Marilyn Monroe. What was the meeting like? What was it? I, uh, she was in a picture with Adele Jurgens. Right. Called Ladies of the Chorus. And she had a featured role and she was very good at it. And uh, a nice press agent, 
good friend of mine, he's dead now, Milt Stein, called me up one day. He said, we got this gorgeous new girl. He said, you've got to meet her. So she and I had lunch at a place on Gower Street called Naples. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you remember still that. Still there, John. Is it still it's, there? It is still oh, there. Man. That is, and it's not that called. It's another name, Italian restaurant. It's still there. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. And anyhow, I, at that time, I thought, geez, this girl's exciting. You know, there's just something about her. You know, you, uh, you sensed it. You felt it. It's, there's a girl right. that's going to make it, going to make it big. You saw that start. So I, I hmm. came back to the office, and I was working for the AP at the time, and I wrote a story about her. And my boss says, ah, oh, who wants to read about an unknown? He says, write about Gable and Cla Crawford. You uh -huh. know, that's who the public wants to do. Well, I took the story and put it aside, and then the boss went on vacation. When he went on vacation, I put it on the wire. So <laughs> I wrote, I'm sure, the first national story ever written about Marilyn Monroe. You were the one. Yeah. And we've been dear friends from then on. James Bacon, they're saying Marilyn took her life. They're saying she was murdered. Let's set it aside right now through James Bacon. Let's say James Marilyn Bacon's going to put it to side yeah. right now to bed. Let's put it to bed. Marilyn right. Monroe was drinking very heavily, uh, vodka and champagne, and she's also taken barbiturates. Right. Uh, and the combination of the two are very lethal. Right. And I'm 100% convinced. In fact, the coroner report said she was an apparent suicide. Right. But it was an accidental suicide. Right. She just right. lost track of the barbiturates. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what Shelley Winters says the Absolutely. same thing. Everybody says sure. the same thing. And, uh, you know, Cause she tried the, to commit it before. With she, the booze, yeah. You yeah. know, Dorothy Kilgowan had minimal amounts of booze and barbiturates in right. her system when she died uh -huh. like that, yeah. Same so thing. Here, but Marilyn was knocking it off like crazy. Mm. I was thought. with her five days before uh, she died. You and, were. Oh, and she, uh, God, she, uh, she must have knocked off, well, both of us, must have knocked off about three or four bottles of Don Perignon. Was she a drinker? Oh, God, really? yes. Champagne. Was, was Picasso a painter. <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Champagne and vodka. Was she a happy girl, James? Well, she uh, she was kind of a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde personality. Sometimes she'd be Norma Jean Baker. The, uh -huh. She worked the, in a factory. Uh, unhappy little waif, Started. you know. And, uh, and then she'd get very unkempt. She'd, uh, her hair would get ma matted and her fingernails would be dirty. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've, I've seen Why her. do you think that? I, I think it just reverts to that very insecure childhood she had when she was kicked around in foster homes. But the minute she put the makeup on, uh -huh. she became Meryl Monroe, and then she was a different person. Oh, she see. was happy. She was Meryl Monroe movie star. Yes, I yeah. See. But uh, see, as far as the Kennedys, I uh, don't. Yeah. The, as far as the as far as the Kennedys uh, murdering her, nah. or ordering her murdered. That's well, hard. They keep watch. pushing that, James. Yeah, Why you know. do they keep pushing that constantly? Well, uh, keeping that alive. There are a couple of books written by people who never knew her. Susan's book out right now, Susan Strasberg. Yeah. Very good, they That's say. The, uh, to me, uh, it's the best book. That's what book she claims, the same as you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Susan's saying the same uh, thing uh, as James is saying sure. about yeah. forgetting the count. You know, she yeah. didn't know how many she took. If, if Jack Kennedy were to kill all the girls he slept with in Hollywood, why you'd have half the actresses in town massacred because, you know, <laughs> oh, Kennedy's right, right. would never... So we got that bedside. Oh, huh? Jim, yeah. James Dean, they keep, there's another one, they keep alive. Why are well, they keeping these two big people alive like that? What, I mean, Clark Gable? I mean, not yeah, really. But, I mean, they, but they, Elvis and, yeah, and James yeah. Dean and yeah. Marilyn. They died young. I think it has a lot to do with it. And they made a tremendous impact on while the young on kids. Earth. Yeah. yeah. Uh, especially Dean. You know, Dean uh, was the you rebel knew him. with the. You oh, knew, knew him. him. Yeah. Tell me about. You knew him just before he got. Uh, you said goodbye to him or something you felt I, uh, just before? I saw him the night before he was killed. Oops. And uh, he used to hang out at the old Villa Capri yes, on McCadden, McCadden Place in Hollywood. And I was just going into the Villa Capri that night. And all of a sudden, this Porsche comes up that little narrow street, about 80 miles an hour, pulls in the parking lot, 
slams on the brake, stops that fall from far from the, right. the restaurant. And I said to Jimmy, I said, Jimmy, that's a good way to keep from growing old. And he says, who wants to grow old? And he was dead the next night, wow. within 24 hours, yeah. What's the biggest story that James Bacon has ever written? Or well, I'd say the biggest Hollywood story. Hollywood story. Okay. Yeah. The biggest Hollywood story was uh, when Mike Todd was killed. Oops. Mm. And uh, I was supposed to be on that plane, and I canceled out the last wow. minute. Really? I, I called Mike up at Burbank Airport about 10.30 that night. It was the worst night in Southern California history. It had snow, sleet, lightning, thunder, everything. In Southern California? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, um, and it was a prop plane. Jets had come in by then. Right. And we're going to take this prop plane back to New York, a 10 or 12 hour flight. Prop planes. And I said, Mike, I'm not going. And he says, uh, I know why you're not going, because uh, your sweetheart's not going. That was the first I knew Elizabeth yes. wasn't going. I he see. says, I made her stay home because. She was going to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I made her, Mike said, I, I made her stay home because she has a bad cold. Uh -huh. Well, gee. 7 o'clock the next morning, the bureau chief of the Associated Press in Albuquerque calls me, and I answer the phone. He says, thank God you answered the phone. Mm. I said, why? He says, well, there's a plane down in Grants, near Grants, New Mexico, and your name's on the passenger manifest. Oh. And I said, it's Mike Todd's plane. Oh my. And I'm not sure of it. You of know. course. And uh, he said there were two bodies burned beyond recognition. That was Mike and Art Cohn. Of course, the, the pile and co-pile were there, too. Yes. Were burned, all burned with beyond recognition. And so I had to call Dick Hanley, who was Mike's secretary. And I told Dick about it. And Dick says, well, we'll have to go over and tell Elizabeth. I'll call Dr. Rex Kenimer. Right. We'll all go over there. So. All three of us converged on that house. They were renting a house on Beverly Estates. Was it Beverly Estates? Or, no, Schuyler Road. Schuyler Road. In Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. And uh, we all got there just about the same time. And Elizabeth knew. She knew at that time. She knew he was dead because she says he was supposed to call her when they refueled in Tulsa. And Ooh. he didn't call. Mm -hmm. And she was there in a looking absolutely gorgeous. She's in a see-through nighty, you know, short uh -huh. nighty. And, uh, you know, when she saw three Basics. of us come in, well, yep. she knew right away that uh, something terrible had happened. So you really got the news first? Oh, yes, yeah. You actually yeah, got yeah. the news first? Yeah. And uh, being an actress, Elizabeth had a, an extroverted reaction. Yeah. She started screaming <coughs> and running through the house like crazy. And finally, Dick Hanley and... Uh, Dr. Kenamar caught her, and Dr. Kenamar gave her a hypodermic and knocked her out uh -huh. and put her in bed. Well, here now, <coughs> the biggest story in the world that day. Right. I'm in the house. Hmm. Within half an hour, I'd already dictated my story before I left my home. So the story's on the wire, and I'm in this house. And outside are 100 TV people, yeah. newspaper people. The well is calling up. Hedda's calling up raising hell oh. because I'm in the house. Right. But, geez, I'm in the house because I was supposed to be on the plane. Right. And then uh, Elizabeth called me up. After she woke up, she called me upstairs at her bedside. And she just told me the whole thing, you know, and uh, how she felt and one thing or another. And I printed it. And it uh, she... That story, the AP at that time had 8,000 newspapers. Right. And they estimated that the story appeared page one in every AP newspaper. And the first time in history, the London papers gave an outside writer a byline. They had my byline right. in all the, uh, the London papers. They'd never done that before with an AP story. The They'd say it's from the Associated Press or something mm -hmm. like that, yeah. James Bacon, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Taylor, um, that was her true love. Uh, would you say? I, 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 would you no, say Al Burton. Burton was in there pretty strong. Yeah, but Mike Todd Mike was Todd, like a father. Yeah, yeah, what do yeah. you say? 
Yeah, Mike Todd, uh, she was very much in love with Mike Todd. They had a baby together. And uh, Do you think that changed Elizabeth Taylor's life at that moment? Uh, well, I, I think it did. Uh, Eddie Fisher, uh, you know, uh, started. He came in? He came in, and he was Mike's best Fred's friend. Fred's best friend. And uh, he, he. That's the only reason she married him, probably. Well, you know, he. Uh, he what? He indulged in the most dangerous occupation known to man. That's uh, drying a widow's tears. Right. And, um, of course, they got married. And, mm -hmm. um, and then after, of course, you know what happened Burton and uh, mm -hmm. Liz and Eddie. You've had some great memories mm -hmm. about Hollywood. You've been oh, around yeah. here for many of them. Um, you just shared that one with Mike Todd. Can mm -hmm. you share me one with Clark Gable? Because you were very close with Clark. Well, Gable and I were very close I friends. I know you were. Yeah, and, uh, he's probably I mean, the, he's Hollywood. Uh, when he, I use the word uh, Hollywood, he was Jimmy king. Dean he was a Jimmy king. Dean was just Jimmy yeah, Dean. Yeah. But Clark Gable, Gable was a king. Am I right? He Red was Butler. a king. Red Butler. Yeah. He was a king. Yeah. Tell me about that king. Well, uh, I'll never forget the morning that uh, Gable got his fatal heart attack. I only lived about f five minutes from him. You were there. Huh? And um, I got the word on the uh, police radio that the ambulance had been dispatched to such and such an address, right. Pettit Avenue, Encino. Well, I knew right away that was Gable's house. So I was over there just as the paramedics were bringing him out on a stretcher. Uh -huh. And I said to Kay Gable at the time, I says, where are they taking him? She says, Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. It was a Sunday morning. <sighs> To this day, I don't know how I did it, but I beat that ambulance to Hollywood Presbyterian Hospital. And I was standing inside the emergency room when they brought Gabo in. He looked at, up at me from the stretch, and the first thing he said, the only thing he said, the last words he ever said to me, wow. he says, how's the food this joint? <laughs> oh, God. Even the way he said that's He had a sense of humor, didn't yeah. he? Gable had a sense of humor. He was dead ten days later, yeah. Ten days oh, later. Oh, yeah, Gable was... I remember once, uh, I think Jimmy Cagney directed a picture. So I said to Gable, I said, when the hell are you going to start directing? He says, direct? He says, Christ, I don't even know how to act yet. <laughs> <laughs> you ever do any movies, uh, James? Acting? I, oh, yeah. They wanted you for films a lot to do. I, believe it or not, I've been in over 600 movies. I beg your pardon? Really, uh, Over 600 movies, and I have not been discovered yet. <laughs> As James Bacon, though. No, oh, no, sometimes characters. Character you know. roles, really? No, my last picture was a picture called Vasectomy. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a, not a porno. It's a PG. What part uh -huh. did you play? <laughs> I played. I played a, a believe it or not, a veterinarian uh -huh. that gave a vasectomy to a dog. Tell me about your new book, James. <laughs> Come on, he's got a new book out there. I heard it. He's got a new book out there coming up. Oh, Come I got on. it. It's just about finished. Finished. It's, it's called I Never Met a Nymphomaniac <laughs> I Didn't Like. Yeah. What's that all about? Well, it's a, a memoir. It's a memoir, and uh, but the title is based on a true uh -huh. story. All the girls you met and all the wonderful. Oh yeah.